the new uni, the alternate uni. Yeah, what about your, your it? Take. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's great to finally do something different around here, but you know, like at the end of the day, it's not going to change the way we play the game. So, I don't. I'm, I'm indifferent about it. Very indifferent. I think you're holding back. You're striking as someone who would have been excited by that. Uh, you know, it's good to have. You know, people have been asking for these all black out, uh, uniforms for since I've been here. So, you know, it's great to finally get that request answered. You know, just go out there, you know, put them on. You know, the stadium going to be blacked out. It's going to be a good environment, you know. Can't wait to see how this goes. You know, good game for us. Big game at home. It's going to be a good one. People have been asking, does that include you? Nah, man, you know, I appreciate I appreciate the jersey, period. Just being able to put the Ohio State jersey on for me is good enough. How different is it when you know you're facing an NFL caliber quarterback? Uh, you know, that means that we know that it's going to be some very good throws, you know, not to take away from any other quarterback that we face because we've faced some pretty decent quarterbacks as well. But to know that he's you know, considered a top pick in the draft, you know, it's just to be able to prepare, you know, it's going to be more competitive for the secondary especially. What's your takeaway as a defense when you come out of Saturday and you get burned by some unusual plays with the, a running quarterback? You, you know, you guys win. As a defense, did you come in there, hey, we won the game, we feel good, or were you? Uh, well, you know, it wasn't, a, you know, for a lot of defensive players at the end of the game, we wasn't really happy about it. I mean, at the end of the day, we did get the win, so that is something to celebrate. But we just know we just got to get better, you know, and just in case we face another quarterback like we did last Saturday in the future, we have to have a better answer for it. Hey, Thomas, what is the answer uh, there, uh, Tavis? What have you figured out? Uh, well, you know, it was a couple, <laughs> it was a couple of uh, blitzes patterns that was messed up, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it just allowed him to get a, a, avoid a sack and be able to get out and make plays with his feet. Tavis, the past two times you guys have faced Christian Hackenberg been two very different results. Uh, took you to overtime last time. The yeah. uh, last time he was in the shoe, though, it was a bit of a beatdown, 63-14. Yeah. Um, what do you expect in this year? Which, uh, which end of the spectrum do you think they're going to fall on? <laughs> Well, due to the fact that they're five and one, I'm pretty sure we're going to get the, you know, a great team that's going to come here and try to do everything they can to upset us at home. I mean, uh, that's what you have to expect. You can't go in there and think that it's going to be a landslide for any team because that's when you, you know, you get upset. It. So you know, you just got to take the same approach that we've been taking every game and try to come out and find a way to get it done. I know you guys take every game serious, and you know. Every team is a rival. I, I'm just wondering, is Penn? I, there's only one Michigan I know, but th this is Penn <laughs> that's, State. That's the team up north. The team up north. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is uh, is Penn State any different though? Because they're usually national spotlight games, nighttime, and everything. Uh, you guys have had some battles there, tradition rich. Or does it? Are they another Big Ten team? Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. That you just take all the um, team well, series. Well, I mean, like I said, I do take every team seriously. And you like, like he said last year, we went up there and we played a very good game against them. So you have to come in and take them very seriously, especially with the record they're having and with the type of talent they have, especially at the quarterback position. That can change games. So yeah, we're gonna definitely take it, look at it like it's kind of like a rivalry game because it, over the past couple of years, you know, it hasn't been an easy game to go up there or even go against him here to play. So you got to take the right precautions to make sure that we get the job done. Thomas, what's the best team you've faced so far as a passive team, quarterback and receivers? What do you think of the first six games, what was the best one? Uh, passive? Oh, probably Western Michigan. Like that number eight definitely was doing <laughs> he did a lot when he had the ball in his hands. And number eighty four definitely was catching a lot of passes for them too. So just those two receivers alone probably gave us the most problems. So with Hackenberg and the Penn State receivers, how do you think they measure up to what you guys have seen so far? Well, I know that um, they have a lot of talent at receivers. I mean. I know they got the number five, the Hamilton guy, who's really good, and they uh, just Hackenberg alone. He may have got the arm to make all the right throws, and uh, when he's in his zone, he's like as effective as anybody in the league. So, just basically being able to match up against those two and try to shut down those top receivers that they got, I think is number five and number ten. I want to say, as the two that I've seen that stood out to me, and just being able to go up against those two and shut those two down will be. Uh, it's going to be a pretty challenging task, actually. What about Tyvis when it, there's a quarterback that can make all the throws, as Chris Ash just put it? Does that change things for the defensive backs? Are you maybe a little 
less likely to jump a route for as an example well we we we're gonna have, we're gonna stay aggressive but i mean you know, it's just being able if they do do double moves you just gonna have to be able to react better you know you, we have to go back and study the film and see what they do and we see it, if we're confident in ourselves we just jumped the route but it's just all about being more confident in it you know and that comes with just watching film and our preparation that we're going to go through this week and i mean just the fact that he be able to make all the throws i mean you just gonna have to allow us to play more tight coverage that we've been doing in the past because he can't make those throws Hey, Tyrus, how, how's your son doing? Because I, I can't imagine that it's easy being told, hey, get this team down the field, and then we're going to give the ball to someone else. How's he dealing with that? Oh, man, he's actually doing pretty good about that. I mean, I had a discussion with him about that, and he said that, you know, it's good that, you know, JT was able to go in for the red zone because, you know, JT is more of a runner than Cardell is, and he's able to do more, open up more things in the red zone. So he actually has no problem with doing that at all. Are y'all experiencing? Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead, Is it a relief at all that uh, with a quarterback that's a pro style, you don't have to worry about coming out of pass coverage to ch chase down a running quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, no, I won't say that because you know what? In this league, in this day and era, everybody is, has the ability to run at quarterback position. So I won't say that he can't run because if I'm pretty sure if he sees open, he's gonna pull it and run. So, but to have the same speed as we faced the past couple of weeks at, at the quarterback position would be kind of a relief. Tavis, how special is, though, having a relationship that y'all seem to be telling us that Cardale and JT have where they are putting the team first is what we keep being told. I mean, how special a relationship, how, how special is that for a team to have that? Well, it's good to not have nobody that's selfish, you know. It's, if everybody on the team is not selfish and everybody cares about putting the team first, then that means that's going to equal good results. I mean, the fact that both of them have that approach, you know, it don't matter. Like, if Cardell is okay with JT going in the red zone and JT is okay with Cardell, you know, getting us down to the red zone. Mm -hmm. I mean, just being have, being able to maintain that focus, it's like, it's real special because there's not a lot of people that can handle that. Like, it's a bunch of people around the country that probably will fold if they was one of the quarterbacks that wasn't playing, you know. So it is, and also kudos to Coach Meyer now for coming up with a way to get both of them on the field because both of them, you know, definitely can make plays with their arms and with their legs. So it's good to be able to see both of them going out there and getting some recognition.